Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my Maserati Gran Turismo. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. I really hope you enjoy it. And if you like this kind of content with my own cars, this gorgeous 2013 Maserati Gran Turismo, a Mercedes-Benz CL500 from 2011, and a cute little MG Midget from 1971, It'd be great to have you as a subscriber. This is now the fourth car I've had which has had a single clutch automatic or what's otherwise called a sequential manual gearbox or SMG. My first Gran Turismo had it, then the Audi R8 had one, then the Ferrari 360 had one, and now this one is also a single clutch automatic. This is called the MC Shift in Maserati terms, it's called the R-Tronic in Audi, it's called the F1 in Ferrari, but basically they're all the same. And there are so many misconceptions and misunderstandings about these gearboxes and how to drive them. In this video, I'm gonna dispel some of those myths and I'm gonna give you some tips for how best to drive these sequential manual gearboxes and how to get the absolute best out of them. So the first question is, what exactly is a sequential manual gearbox? In the simplest of terms, it's just a manual gearbox. It's often exactly the same as an equivalent manual gearbox. So you're starting essentially with what is a manual transmission. Instead of having a gear lever and a clutch pedal, you have hydraulic actuators and a computer plus some paddles. So instead of pressing the clutch pedal and manually shifting the gears, the driver inputs the commands via the paddles and the computer then decides how to disengage and re-engage the clutch and how to shift the gears depending on whether it's up or down. So this is very, very different from what you would normally call an automatic. There are two different types really of automatic. There's a torque converter automatic and a dual clutch. If you check my video up here, I do quite a detailed explanation of the difference between the different types of transmission. But the key point you really need to understand is that this is not an automatic gearbox. It is essentially a manual gearbox, which is controlled by a computer. This misunderstanding has led to so many misconceptions about the uh, sequential manual gearbox that it's, it's almost become a bit of a joke in automotive circles. You know, the, the R-Tronic is humorously called the R-Chronic by certain people because it's allegedly jerky and slow. You know, I'll often be watching YouTube videos of car reviewers and they will refer to the single clutch automatic or the sequential manual gearbox as horrible, abhorrent, terrible, slow, jerky. I mean, a veritable thesaurus of different words to describe this kind of transmission. But really, it all boils down to a misunderstanding of what it actually is. So when you go to shift gears, the clutch will disengage, the gears will be shifted, and then the clutch will re-engage again. That's exactly what happens when you're driving a manual, right? You press your pedal, you change gears, and then you release the pedal. And that's exactly what happens in a sequential manual gearbox. It's just that the computer does all the, the movements and can often do it faster and more precisely than, well, certainly this human, but you know, most humans. The other thing to bear in mind is that a lot of these sequential manuals have slightly different programs depending on whether you've got sport mode or comfort mode engaged, but also where you are in the rev limit. So for example, in the Gran Turismo, you need to get higher up in the rev range. I think it's above 5,000. And then you'll notice that the shifts are actually much, much quicker. The automatic mode in these sequential manual gearboxes is for emergencies only. That's the only reason you should use it. If somebody is driving the car who's not familiar with how a manual transmission works, then sure, they can drive it in auto. But the real way to drive these cars always is with the paddles, as if you are shifting a manual gearbox. Let's just experiment with what, how this works. So we're sitting at standstill, the clutch is disengaged slightly, 
we pull the paddle to go into first gear, apply the accelerator, the clutch slips a little bit and then pulls away. When you change gear, you feel the clutch disengage and then the gear change and then it re-engages the clutch. And I think a lot of the uh, misconceptions come from expecting this transmission to be like an automatic, like completely seamless as, as a torque converter automatic is, or you know, extremely rapid like a dual clutch transmission is. It's neither of those things. But even given those caveats, it's still incredibly smooth. Like I can just upshift, I really don't feel it. I can downshift, notice a slight hesitation as the clutch disengages and re-engages. It's virtually nothing. So that said, there are some legitimate concerns with sequential manual gearboxes, one of which is clutch wear, and I'm going to address that in my tip section, because if you drive one of these cars without really understanding what it's like, yes, you can get quite heavy clutch wear, but I would maintain that if you drive it with the knowledge of how it works, you can get as much life out of a clutch as you would with a manual transmission. So now I'm going to give you a few little tips as to how to drive one of these cars with a sequential manual gearbox and how you can prolong and extend your clutch life and get more enjoyment out of driving the car. So the first point to bear in mind is that if you have a sport mode you should always really drive it in sport mode. Now the reason for that is because the majority of clutch wear happens when the clutch plates are slipping. So if you keep that to a minimum, that's going to minimize your clutch wear. Now usually in the sport mode, the clutch is going to engage a little bit more abruptly than in the more comfort modes. In the comfort modes, you're going to get more clutch slippage, that's going to cause more wear. So if you drive it in sport, those clutch shifts will be a little bit sharper and you'll get less clutch wear. Second point is when you're slowing down to stop and then the traffic moves on and you have to accelerate away again, always flick it down into first because the computer, if you're in second, will slip the clutch in second and attempt to start you back off again in second. So if you're slowing down and you need to speed up again, make sure you flick it down into first because then the clutch plates are locked together and you won't get that slip. The third point is always ensure that when you're starting, keep the throttle demand as constant as possible. Because of the way the computer works, if you lift off the accelerator while the clutch is slipping, it will have to recalculate how much it's got to move the clutch plate and that can actually cause more slipping. So this is something that actually takes a little bit of practice. When you're starting off, try and keep that throttle demand constant so that the computer can then calculate how much to move the clutch plate to get the best pulling away of the car. Point number four, don't lift off the throttle when you're changing gear. So I'm gonna demonstrate here. I'm just gonna keep the throttle pegged didn't change the throttle position, you notice that the car automatically eased off the throttle and then reapplied when the gear was changed. That's all part of the computer. A lot of people I've read online or in videos, people say, oh, if you lift off the accelerator, you'll get like a smoother change. I'm absolutely not convinced that's the way to go because like I said with point three, if you lift off the throttle, the computer has to do a recalculation. If you just keep the throttle pegged where you want it, just allow the computer to do the work, it does it. I'm not changing the throttle position here, just keeping it completely in the same position. The computer does all the work. Once again, that's a, a way to reduce your amount of clutch wear. And the fifth point is just don't expect it to be an automatic. It has the characteristics of a fully manual transmission because that's exactly what it is. So you're not going to get the seamless quality of a torque converter automatic 
and you're not going to get the you know the the bang 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 of a of a dual clutch transmission and i maintain it's actually one of the best transmissions you can get it's very engaging to drive far better than a torque converter automatic and is a hell of a lot of fun so thanks very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you found it useful. There are so many misconceptions about the single uh, clutch gearbox, the sequential manual, that it drives me insane. I watch so many videos on YouTube where people just don't understand it. And as a result, people are put off buying these cars. But if you understand how they work and what they are, these are absolutely fantastic options for transmission and you should absolutely not be put off. As I say, I've had four of these. Some are better than others. They've improved over the years, but by and by, they are absolutely fantastic. Anyway, let me know in the comments down below what you think uh, of the SMG, if you've had one yourself. Um, any thoughts on the tips that I've shared with you today? Um, always great to read your comments. So thanks very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to smash that like. It'd be great to have you as a subscriber and hit that notification bell. You can follow me on Instagram down here and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.